Hey, we've got this incredible floor plan. I'm here with John, the Picasso of dental floor plans. Check out this space. It is beautiful. It is impressive. And I can't wait to introduce you guys to John, our hey. lead floor plan designer. John, would you say hello? Hey, greetings, my friends. I, uh, you know, I'd like to show you being a little bigger. I wonder if this shows your screen a little larger here. Um, guys, one of the things that is fascinating to me is how somebody like John, after designing 4,000 floor plans, how he can transform a space that a contractor might say isn't workable. That looks like it has design elements that won't fit the space or, or prevent you from having an efficient floor plan. And he can simultaneously match all that with your clinical philosophy. So John, um, we are going to look at Dr. David's space today, right? Yes, we are. What a, a fantastic uh, area to work with, uh, Jamie. Fantastic climate, a client to work with, and a challenging space, but uh, it was fun to, uh, to get uh, arms, arms into it and working on it. So if you had to summarize David's space here in kind of one summary concept, uh, what would you say is, is a good way to summarize this incredible space and his situation? Well, it was a smaller space uh, as far as the ratio of uh, production per the square feet of the space. So we had to make it look larger than it actually was. Uh, and we also had to concentrate on uh, efficiency of uh, the patient flow and the team members in the facility. Uh, the location where the doors were worked with us a little bit, but they gave us a little bit of a hassle. But uh, we were able to capitalize on the fact where they were located in coming up with making the office look actually bigger than it was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you see some that. elements in there, Jamie. Uh, those large columns. Yeah, let's talk about the columns. I remember this situation in particular. The columns uh, was one of those topics that would, uh, let's call it what it is, make some most contractors in America say that a dental office can't be built here, or even equipment people. They'll say, "Well, there, there's something like columns in the way. We can't build a dental office here." Well, there's a rule of thumb to where columns can work in a, in a building. Uh, there's a certain distance from the exterior walls or a demising wall where they do work with the, with the flow of a dental office. Sometimes it doesn't. So instead of trying to get frustrated with them, we wanted to celebrate those columns and put those architectural elements into the uh, fabric of the design on this, in this case, Jamie. I love it. And uh, really good. It, it helped with efficiency, actually, uh, moving uh, patients and team members in, in and out of the facility. Let's talk about efficiency. I mean, the, the columns are one thing, and being able to have the vision and the ability to make a space that a contractor says won't work for a dental office mm -hmm. and turning it into a design feature, like you said, celebrating the columns. Let's talk through the efficiency topic that you just brought up. But what do you say for a doctor who's got this clinical philosophy, like Dr. David, uh, who wants to create an efficient space in a space that might even feel a little too small on paper. Well, that, that is a big challenge in any dental office is to separate the disciplines of dental office design, which are uh, public, uh, administrative, clinical, and team areas. You want to have those areas separate from each other, but not overlapping each other. So that when it's in a smaller space, that can be a real, little bit of a challenge. So we just came up with some un unique ways of con uh, connecting some rooms together with each other and allow uh, areas of a clinical zone to come into the administrative area, but actually you don't even see them uh, in so that area. If I'm looking at the clinical zone entering into the administrative area, would that be kind of in this area right here? Yeah, that's, that's the entrance into the clinical zone. And as you would turn to immediately to the left uh, of that point, Jamie, you, you have the sterilization area, uh, no, the other direction, the other left, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going, yeah, go left. Now you have the sterilization area. And now, if you go around the uh, turn 90 degrees to the left, then you have the laboratory and the uh, lounge, all in that area that is all separate from the administrative and the public areas, but it's actually designed in that area, but it's separated because of the uh, strategic, strategic location of the door locations. Brilliant. So helped out tremendously of getting the efficiency of the team towards that side of the building. Oh, I love it. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. So if you're looking at this space, John, and uh, you know, you, you've done thousands of floor plans and there are things that maybe like many dentists, you, doctor, you can probably spot some opportunities for clinical improvement 
in a patient's mouth even before you get start getting working. And sometimes I would imagine that once in a while you have a patient who has their own opinion about how a restoration <laughs> should be affected. And they say, well, shouldn't we do it this way? Or I read on WebMD that maybe this would be a good idea, right? Doctor, does that sound familiar? John, this doctor, you know where I'm going with this. This doctor, Dr. David, uh, very humbly, uh, he's an, such an amazing guy. He very humbly ad, ad discusses this issue of having his outside people comment on the floor plan and he almost missed out on a huge benefit in his practice. Can you talk us through what that was like? Well, he, he did uh, show us a design um, that he had someone else do. And um, I'm not one to critique other people's designs because I know how hard they work on them. But there was some elements, Jamie, that we thought were mm, a little bit that should be considered. Again, it was a separation of his clinical zone to where you know he had his treatment rooms on one side of the building and his support areas were on the extreme other side of the building. You had to walk past the reception room. You had to walk past the business office. You had to walk behind the administrative area to get to the lab and to get to other support areas. It just, uh, it just totally ruined the uh, efficiency of the, of the space, which is very, uh, let's say, uh, talked to David a little bit and said, you know, David, uh, let's talk about these uh, elements and, um, did you ever think about this and this and this movement and this interaction? And slowly we were able to develop the design to, uh, to what you see today of uh, creating an atmosphere that gets everything that he wanted in this space with efficiency. That's really good. Uh, and, uh, you mentioned efficiency and team movement. I, I mean, that's so important so that doctors aren't just left with a nice space that, you know, some people think the concept of having no cabinets is inherently good. And that's not necessarily true. We know that but based on a clinical philosophy and the practice flow that will help determine if cabinetry is a good idea for your practice. A lack of cabinetry is not an inherent good in dental floor plans. It is that exactly, exactly, Jamie. Now, one of the things we do is we have an open mind to the client we're talking to. We have a pre-designed consultation and it's very intense as far as making this, in other words, they're giving us the colors of the painting they want us to produce. All right. Mm -hmm. To extract these colors from them, though, we have a, a long conversation about how they want to work in the treatment zone. And don't forget, it's their office. It's not somebody else's. They're in mm -hmm. different height, width, uh, reach, uh, different desires, different techniques. So we want to surround that environment that makes them feel comfortable and want to do dentistry in that in that office. So we found that David needed to have cabinetry in his treatment rooms. That had a lot to do with the oversight, overall size of the building because of storage limitations, which helped us um, have storage within the treatment rooms. But also, David actually used his cabinetry. A lot of mm -hmm. doctors don't, some do. And we want to customize that design to fit around their needs. I think a good way to to, to say this is doctors, if you feel like cabinetry would be good for your practice, you don't need to believe those comments that say that cabinetry should not be in a good floor plan design. Because you can see in this floor plan design, it's beautiful. I mean, look at these sliding glass doors. Look at the feel and the flow of this practice. It's intentionally designed around the clinical philosophy of Dr. David. And in his case, clearly he uses cabinetry and he it works does. beautifully for him. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Team movement. Can you uh, comment on the topic of team movement? Well, again, you, you strategically located the sterilization area where all dental office designs, the sterilization should be in the central location, but also should be semi-hidden uh, and have uh, auxiliary uh, support behind it or storage in back of it. So uh, we have that. We have the location was strategically located of the imaging equipment. So it doesn't affect the overall flow of the office. When you have a smaller office, Jamie, you have a tendency to have the imaging room up more front, front yes. of the clinical zone. And that shuts things down. That shuts down movement, it embarrasses people. Uh, people think they're gonna glow for three days if they walk by it. So you kind of want to go and extract that element and put it more towards the back of the unit, which is the least traveled area of the office. So you don't have those contentions, you don't have those problems. And doctor, I think that's a, another important topic that John's pointing out that I see as a mistake in so many other practice floor plan designs, sometimes doctors will try to, they'll, they'll do their best to try to save costs. 
And the best way they know how to do that is try to make a smaller space. And sometimes that's, that's not really beneficial to the overall practice profitability plan. But sometimes the byproduct of those smaller spaces is just like what John said. Sometimes the wrong floor plan elements end up in the wrong space of the practice. Like John just said, having a, a pan out in the front of the practice. That might look cool to you and me, doctor, for you and me and John. That, that's amazing. Wow, you have a Serona pan right in front of your practice? How beautiful. It, patients don't really always see it that way. Well, exactly, Jimmy, because look what we, we always design this through the eyes of the patient. Now, if you can zoom in and imagine the patient walking through the front door, all right? We'll do that. And look at what they're seeing. Look yeah, at how that. we enlarge that waiting room with the glass wall and the uh, a following wall, which normally would be a panorex or a pan or an imaging unit. Instead of seeing that, that's what the patients are seeing. So mm -hmm. look down. They're seeing the logo. They're, they're just like, it's, it, it's invigorating. It makes them excited to be in that office. They're not looking at a piece of equipment, uh, that, which is special to us in the dental industry, but to as a patient, do I want to see that or I want to see activity or you know, activity in, the, in this facility? That's what so, made the office what it is. It made the office look bigger and looking very inviting to the, to the uh, patients. So good. John, last thing then, you and I, uh, when we were talking about the strategy for Dr. David's office, we talked about the intersection of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight these options and you probably know where I'm going with this. We've got this situation here, this glass, mm -hmm. and we've got, this mirror over here uh, in, included in that is the glass. I'm pointing an arrow backwards here on the screen. And then in addition to that, we have even more glass out over in this area, way to the, to the back left. So a patient comes in, there's all this glass, all this mirror. What's the strategy? Well, it's a little, it shows transparency of the office. It doesn't show like, you know, they're just being locked into this room and it's okay, you're next. It's like you're part of this office because that's what we want to portray is that a doctor really becomes part of their lives. They're not just a dentist. And as a dentist, you are, you are part of their lives and part of their community. And we want to show them that they're not going to be locked up in this small little room. That they are, it is inviting and it doesn't feel them they're compressed in an area. That's so what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that we want for you, Doc. So I hope that some of these concepts have given you a new perspective on what's possible for your practice. You know, if you're looking at a startup or you're looking at expanding your practice, uh, these are concepts that work. These are concepts that are not just theories that you read about in books or hear about in a course. These are actually based on hundreds and even thousands of practices all around the country. So if you'd like, uh, you can follow the link, whether it's on this page or in this post, uh, follow through to the link here and you'll be able to see Dr. David. You'll actually hear directly from him on some of the strategies from his perspective. Some of the things that changed, some of the things that impacted his life, some of the things that impacted his day-to-day -day workflow. And you'll hear his thoughts on this whole, on this whole strategy. And uh, you'll be able to see, uh, interact in this floor plan if you want to play with it in 3D. Uh, we'll give you access to that too. Just click on the link here in the video. And John, uh, any final words from you? Any final words of wisdom for doctors as they're considering this? The, the greatest thing we did is when we redesigned this office for David is we made his life fun. We made it enjoyable and made it productive. And that makes the team members productive and fun and having enjoying coming to the office. And subsequently, it makes the uh, patients loving to come to a dental office. That was the greatest uh, uh, heart. I felt fell in my heart when, when you told me these things. So good. Yeah. Well, thank you, John. Another one. Really well done. Good yeah, work. Thank fun. you. Yeah. All right. Talk soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.